before 2005, I was a pretty busy young man, uh, fitting in university life and also sporting, family, social, 22nd birthday, uh, the last game of a, of a waffle season uh, of footy and very much what was Friday, Saturday, birthday, game of football turned into Monday morning. I was uh, going about my typical pre-work routine, had a shower, I, I looked in the mirror, I noticed a big golf ball size uh, lump on the, on the side of my neck. Exact diagnosis was the morning after uh, the operation to remove that lump and it turned out there were three lumps. The next step was to go to the oncologist, the cancer specialist. I was told write down a list of questions. So I wrote down a list of questions, I got them out ready to go and I looked across and mum had her bit of paper on her lap and it said how long has he got to live? That's all it said. And to me I turned to mum and I said that's the one question that's not on my list. Uh, my wife Catherine received a phone call from a lady named uh, Robin Heal uh, who was seeking to bring her son, uh, who, who was then 22, to uh, meet with us. So when we rocked up at this house in Cottesloe, I, I was a, a bit surprised. I thought we were going to the beach. Uh, we were met by a man and, and his wife and uh, I sort of thought, oh, you've got, you've got me here, Mum. Um, and we, we sat across the kitchen table for the, for the next couple of hours. Significantly, what we noticed was that um, this young man, uh, apart from trying to deal with this uh, diagnosis of, of melanoma with, with a whole range of, um, of secondaries, was actually mentally probably in a very dark place. And, and we spoke about the fact that Ross had been diagnosed with melanoma some 14 years prior to, to my diagnosis and, and really spoke about how potentially you know, I could really do okay. But then I decided to uh, put a question to Clinton, um, really about something that confronts most people when they are living with cancer, and that is, um, what, what is the really deep purpose in my life? I guess I was so motivated by meeting Ross that I thought, well, everyone needs to give it, be given this opportunity. Um, I received a phone call from Clint saying, Ross, I've really thought about that question and I've actually got a plan. I'd love for you to set up a, a melanoma specific support service. I, I thought for a moment and I said to Clint, no. This isn't something I'm going to do. This is, this is something you're going to drive. This is going to be your purpose. Uh, and to my amazement, within, within days, within weeks, um, this young man was on a, on a new journey that was not only going to change his life and that of his family uh, and ours, but touch the lives of literally thousands of people over the next eight to 10 years. The reason he set it up was because he didn't want other people to go through the same experience he'd been through, which is having a diagnosis and having nowhere to go. I'm so passionate about the awareness initiatives that we do as a part of Melanoma WA because I really see the prevention and the early detection makes a big difference and, and I can only look at myself and think, wow, if I had have had that message delivered to me when I was a teenager or prior to my diagnosis, perhaps things could have been a lot different. I had a man who said, stop, and I thought, well, what's happening here? And he said, you saved my life. And I thought, has he got the right person? And he proceeded to say that uh, I'd been to his, to his uh, place of employment uh, down in Collie. So after that talk, he, he went and had his skin checked and, and he found a, a melanoma on his forearm. And the doctor said, if you had have left this any longer, it very likely would have been at that level that, that would have metastasized and spread. And for him to say, I'm still, I'm going fine, two years after that melanoma being found, it's, it's just something that uh, keeps the fire burning, uh, keeps, keeps the motivation there to, to continue spreading the message. Now, I just wish Clinton for the very, very best for the future, and I really look forward to being able to watch the next stage of his life as it unfolds. And Clinton continues to face challenges, as we all do, with this disease, and I think that should not be forgotten. But irrespective of that, 
he still has this quite remarkable focus uh, to be able to do good in our community and what I call simply making a difference. And I think that's what he does.